Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, October 18th. Today's topic is Twitter chat and our special guest is Alice Keeler. I'm one of the show hosts, Lori Moffat, along with Peggy George and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Melissa Getz will introduce Alice. Sorry, I forgot to talk. Well, Alice Keeler is a Google certified teacher, New Media Consortium K-12 ambassador, Microsoft Innovative Educator, and LAC admin, and online and blended certified. She's taught high school math for 14 years. She's an adjunct professor of curriculum, instruction, and technology at California State University, Fresno. She's an adjunct instructor in the Masters of Ed Tech at Fresno Pacific University. Alice Keeler has developed and taught online K-12 courses, as well as the Innovative Educator Advanced Studies Com Certificate. She has led project teams for Google projects, such as the YouTube Teachers Project and the Google Play for Education Project. She has served on the New Media Consortium Horizon Report Advisory Panel for both 2013 and 2014. Being in the classroom lesson developer, a believer in the importance of connectivity, she founded Hashtag Coffee EDU and Hashtag Prof Chat. Masters in Educational Media Design and Technology, she's now a doctoral student at Boise State University in EdTech with a focus on gamification. She's passionate that kids are not failures, using technology to change the way we approach learning and grading. Alice tweets at Alice Keeler and blogs at AliceKeeler.com. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa, for that introduction. That was super nice of you. I am so excited to be here this morning. Uh, I am mildly considering changing my job title to Twitter. I'm so you're going to do the question. I'll just jump in there. <laughs> We're so glad to have you here with us today, Alice. And we always like to ask a newbie question to kind of scaffold a little bit for people. So just in case there are people who are not using Twitter, we thought that would make a great way to get the conversation going. So if you could just briefly share with us, well, what is Twitter? And how is it being used by educators for their own professional learning? So take it away, Alice. Thank you. All right, so um, what is Twitter? Twitter is a place to have conversations. And I like to say that this is not Facebook. I don't use it like Facebook, and I don't follow people who do. I strictly use my Twitter account to connect with other educators, teachers who are sharing, giving away things for free, like free lesson plans, free advice, free moral support, which is hugely important, especially when you've had a bad day. Uh, actually, educators are the number one users of Twitter. And so I use it by uh, posting on their ideas and questions and resources that I have, and I'm following people who do the same. So for professional development, I'm able to see globally what people are doing in different classrooms and different places. So Twitter is a place to be concise, get resources, and connect with others. And so if we want to get started here with, with talking about what Twitter chats are in particular, let's first find out, I know we already had kind of a, a, a poll there, but whoops. Um, do you have a Twitter account? If you do, why don't you go ahead and put it down in the, into the chat what your Twitter uh, name is. This would be a good opportunity for us to connect with each other. I see some of you are putting your Twitter, hash, uh, Twitter handle as your name. That's brilliant. And so these are these uh, Twitter handles here on the side that everyone's putting into the chat. I would encourage everyone to follow each other. Obviously, here we've got a group of passionate educators who are willing to connect with others on a Saturday. 
And so I always like to follow people who are willing to share and connect. And, and this is this is obviously a group that wants to do that. So make sure you follow everybody that's posting here in the chat. Actually, if you type it like this, if you type twitter.com and then your ha Twitter handle, it makes it into a live link. Uh, so that would make it easier for people to just click on it to follow you. So I see we have somebody forgot their Twitter handle. Um, that happens sometimes. You can go in and um, look that up. You can have it do that, but probably you're going to end up just making a new Twitter handle. And then email it to yourself. Uh, if you're using Gmail, it has a really good search. So I type in there like Twitter handle, Twitter password, email it to myself. So when I forget things like that, I'm able to, to jump in there. Oh, look at this. Awesome. I'm going to start following a few of you guys here. And then follow. And I'm following a few of you. So, you know, some of you are Twitter experts already. Awesome. This is a great way to just increase my PLN and hopefully yours. So thanks, guys. So take just a few seconds, you know, follow some of these uh, links. I'm really glad that you guys are putting them as, as live hyperlinks. That makes it a lot easier. I'm going to real quick just go over what is Twitter for those people who might be new to it. Um, if you have not used Twitter before, you just go to twitter.com and you'll be able to sign up. Put in your name, your email, your password. Just to remember your uh, Twitter name kind of defines you. I tend to, when I meet somebody, I refer to them by their Twitter handle. So my friend David Terrio, I'll call him David T E D U because that's his Twitter name. I'm going to go ahead and type his hyperlink in there because if you're not following him, I would recommend it. Um, and so, you know, think about what you want people to call you and how you're going to connect. And you're trying to connect with other educators, so using your name or something about teaching is a great Twitter handle. And less characters is going to be super helpful. Now, I'm going to put in here a getting started guide that I think is handy because I made it. So, HTTP slash capital V, lowercase h, lowercase k, capital X, A, A. Uh, so that actually links to my blog. I used up another Twitter account. Uh, you know, some of us have to do that sometimes. I use, I have multiple Twitter accounts because I try to keep it on topic. And I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but you want to remember you're trying to attract an audience of educators and you're trying to connect with other educators. So um, having a Twitter account specifically dedicated for connecting with teaching I think is a great idea. So if you're using your Twitter account to mix tweeting out pictures of your kids, which obviously, and I have five children myself, they're 10, 9, 7, 4, and 2, um, you know, I love, love seeing pictures of people's family, but you know, we, our days are busy, and so we try to keep it on focus and on topic about, about teaching. So have one for your personal and have one for your teaching. So the super important is if your Twitter handle does not have a picture and a bio, it's going to be really hard for people to connect and follow with you. And your bio should say something about you being an educator, what you teach. Your, it's like flies to honey, right? You want to attract people to you who are of uh, in the educational context. I, I don't want to say like-minded. I actually really enjoy people who challenge my thinking and, and, and don't agree with me. Um, you know, that's how you grow. But you want to attract people who are going to be on that same topic. And I'm really picky about who I follow. I, I really want to find people who are doing some innovative things to help me to grow as an educator. So make sure you have a picture some sort of a picture, better if it's your face, but it could be anything. I mean, you could put a picture of your dog, but just some way for people to connect and get to know you. So make sure you have that bio. And thanks for posting that link. Uh, Annabelle just posted um, the best Twitter bios, and I saw him tweet that out earlier today. So if you want some advice, I would uh, definitely catch that link he just put out. So the key to using Twitter, uh, especially when you get started, people just feel like, well, how do I do this, and what do I tweet? Uh, you know, the first place to get started is to retweet and reply. So if you look at, first you've got to find uh, some educators to follow. I have a list of uh, innovative educators uh, on my blog. I have a list of those. But also if you just find one person and then go see who they're following and follow who they're following. 
you get a stream of people, and don't be afraid to unfollow. Um, the purpose here is not for you necessarily to make friends, although you definitely will make many. It's for you to grow as an educator. So you're really looking for people who are providing good content for you. Thanks, Peggy, for the link to my blog. So as you hover over one of the tweets, what you're going to notice is the ability to retweet or reply. So retweeting rebroadcasts or republishes it to the people who are following you. And that's a great way to engage with people. The person who you retweet will be notified that you tweet, retweeted their tweet. And then people are on Twitter for a reason, and that reason is to connect and share. You should never feel embarrassed to reply to somebody or feel like you're sneaking in on somebody else's conversation. They didn't put it in a public venue because it was a private conversation. They're posting on Twitter because they want to engage with a larger audience. So don't be afraid to reply, 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 and follow all those people that you see posting things that you think are of value. So I think the genius of Twitter is that it's 140 characters. And they say, like, you have to be clever. The uh, problem with Google Plus and Facebook is it allows people to ramble, which is fine. There's a lot of value in that and where you can dig deeper. And you can always link to uh, maybe your blog or Google Plus or some of these other places that you do it. But I'm so busy as a teacher. I'm like, I just don't have time to read article after article after article, although I do read a lot of articles. Um, but going through Twitter, you, people have to like, you have to be concise. Get your point in. And I can scroll through and I can get a lot of really good nuggets and ideas in just a few seconds. And I don't try to keep up on the Twitter feed. I just scroll a little bit, get those resources and tweets that people shared. And, and you know what? There's a lot of them that I'm going to miss. And that's okay. But Twitter is in the moment. So this is just a really nice venue, I think, for teachers because just between class, you can jump on Twitter real quick and, oh, that's a good idea. I want to try that tomorrow. So just ways to inspire. All right. I don't know if you know this, but if you start a tweet with at, with the at symbol, it actually is private, sort of. Nothing on Twitter is private. Just assume everything is public. But it assumes that you're kind of replying with like, oh, thanks, I appreciate you doing that, that it's really not intended for uh, a more global audience. So the only people that are going to see tweets that start with the at hashtag are people that follow both of you. So if I type something like this, at David T. Edu, can you share your resources on Twitter? The only people that would see that tweet would be people who already follow both myself and David. Now, if you went to my uh, Twitter bio or um, my personal stream where you can just see my tweets, it would show up there and you'd be able to see it. But if you were not following both me and David, you would not see that tweet that I did. So really be careful when you reply to somebody to realize that it's semi-private. And if you intend for it to kind of reach a larger audience or you want to engage with more people, or especially if you're asking a question. Why are you asking a question on Twitter rather than sending a text message? Because potentially there's a larger audience of people who could answer that. So just be careful that, so you'll see a lot of people that put a period and then the at symbol. So like I'll do period dot at David T. Edu, here's my tweet. Just by starting it with something besides at makes it back to that global audience. So something to think about because when you're replying, it automatically puts the at symbol first. So. Uh, I would like to encourage you, if you are not on Twitter, I want you to join. But to keep it on topic, we are here to connect with other educators. So we should be talking about education. If you're really into Red Sox baseball and you want to talk with Red Sox fans, make a second Twitter account. I have like eight Twitter accounts and so that I can connect with people for a purpose. And so that when I see my Twitter feed, it's all education. Uh, you can use a question mark to start a tweet, absolutely. Uh, the only thing to be careful about starting a tweet with is the at symbol. Thanks for asking that question. So uh, pick your topic. What are you tweeting about? And stick with that. And your bio should reflect that. I'm, the, I'm doing tweets about education. I'm a teacher. Again, attracting the right audience so that you're having a really good PLN experience. And I'm really adamant about this. I don't have time for pictures of your tacos. I am sure that they are awesome and really delicious. Facebook's a great place to put that, 
but your tacos don't usually make me a better educator. So just thinking about how are you enriching and sharing, it doesn't have to be profound what you put out there, but it should be on the topic of education. And Peggy again is sharing uh, the link to the live binder. I would really encourage you to check that out on educational hashtags. So speaking of hashtags, uh, this can be something that's really confusing for people. Like, what's a hashtag? Why would I use this? A uh, hashtag is a topic. If you're signaling to people, this is what you're talking about. And then there's real hashtags and there's fake hashtags. I think this morning I used something like, it is not a ed tech conference if the Wi-Fi works, uh, where I just took a bunch of words and mashed them all together. That would be a fake hashtag and not a real topic. But if you're looking to connect with people, you probably don't know people globally. And you would, how would you know to find somebody talking about teaching math or talking about teaching art? And so the way to do that is to use the hashtag. So you pick the, you, there's the, the topic and it has the pound symbol in front of it. And those are actually clickable. Uh, so if you click on the hashtag, it's going to show a filter and show you what everybody is tweeting on that hashtag. Now here's something that I need to caution you about. I teach pre-service teachers and I ask them to sign up for Twitter. And then they tweet and then we go to the hashtag and they can't see their tweets. So there, there's people who use Twitter for spam and for things that are not about uh, the topic of education and uh, other things. And so Twitter kind of locks us down and says you need to have at least 10 followers before they'll really start broadcasting your stuff. So if you are helping somebody get on Twitter, also help them to find at least 10 followers. And one way that I do that is I have a bunch of Twitter accounts, right? And so I'll follow these new people from my other Twitter accounts and get them a few followers and of course reach out to my PLN and ask them to follow them. Uh, my middle school daughter is horrified if I ever use hashtags. Well, maybe you would like to avoid using the hashtags with your fingers and saying them out loud in public. That would definitely be embarrassing. But uh, using them on Twitter is not only a good idea, it's really essential. Uh, does that scare you to think about having multiple Twitter accounts? What a great question. Is anybody uh, scared about having multiple Twitter accounts? You can manage it easily in your phone uh, on your mobile device. You can account switch relatively easily. I mostly stick to my one Twitter account, but I do have I do have multiple ones. So the hashtag is the topic and you kind of like look at what other people are tweeting and pay attention to what hashtags they're looking. So if someone's using a hashtag and they're saying something really interesting, I'm going to click on that hashtag to see what other people are saying on that topic. All right. Just use the same password, Bobby. He can't remember that many passwords. I just use the same password for all my Twitter accounts. And I know a lot of, uh, I don't want to say a lot, I know a few uh, educators like Lisa Heifel who does use Twitter with their elementary students. That doesn't mean that every student has their own Twitter account. I believe that is in violation of the terms of use. But they have a classroom Twitter account. And they're using that to connect with other classes and other people and to help get their voice and their questions outside of the walls of their classroom. So I would encourage you to try and find some followers who are using Twitter with their students and ask them questions about how they're doing that because it's being done, you know, fourth graders are even doing this. So definitely something you can use. When you click on the hashtag or up at the very top, you'll notice there is a search box. You can search for a hashtag. Um, it's going to show you results of people using that hashtag and they are probably people you do not follow. So this is a great way to find people to follow. But it kind of filters it for you. So right underneath where it says results for, and I did a search for NT chat this morning, new teacher chat. Uh, right under that, it has a link to all. So you can expand and see all the tweets on that hashtag. Twitter still filters it. And again, people who have less than 10 followers are not really going to show up there. But the hashtags are clickable. They're blue. You should click on them and, and find out more on that topic. So I was wondering, what are your Twitter tips? So those are my Twitter tips. What kind of tips do you have? I 
if Lisa is amazing. If you are not following her, I would totally uh, recommend that you do. She does run new teacher chat. I'm going to type in her Twitter handle, uh, teaching with soul. So teaching with soul is Lisa Dabbs and definitely a follow. Everyone should, should follow her. So go ahead and click on that link and follow Lisa. Highly, highly recommend. Uh, just the nicest person and so helpful. Yeah, don't expect to read everything on Twitter. That's crazy. There's so much out there. Uh, I just get in. I just scroll a little bit and get, you know, get what I need to get for those few minutes and, and do other things with my life. Otherwise, Twitter really would be my job. Um, so Brian says he didn't realize, uh, he didn't understand Twitter until he realized he did not need to read every tweet. Uh, so I'm not afraid to retweet some of my ideas multiple times. I know that people are getting online at different times. I read somewhere that about 4.30 is where you're going to get the most engagement. But, you know, if I tweet something at 8 o'clock at morning, the people who are on Twitter at 2 o'clock in the afternoon are probably different. So it's okay to, to retweet some of the things you said before. Peggy says to be selective about who you follow. I, I'm definitely very selective. I, I want to engage with people who are being innovative. And it's not personal if I, if I don't follow somebody. There's, um, it's, it's, this is a, uh, well, it's not personal. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just really looking for, for people who are, are sharing and, and giving ideas. I got 10 free smart boards on Twitter one time. I just happened to be in a Twitter chat and someone was, uh, mentioning t smart boards and like, oh, you know, can I get some smart boards? And they're like, absolutely. And I had to drive out three hours to San Jose to, to go pick up the smart board and they gave me 10. I was able to give uh, inner city low income school these 10 smart boards, which was awesome. And I, I don't even know who this person was. And just so many generous people on Twitter willing to, to give advice, lesson plans, and to make connections and have a lot of really great Twitter wins. Uh, I'm assuming, Shambles Guru, that your hashtag thing too far is to the um, SNL sketch with, oh my gosh, what's his name? He's a singer. Uh, but anyway, I, that's a, a funny SNL video that definitely you guys should watch. All right, good. These are some great tips. Thanks for sharing those. But today we're focusing on Twitter chat. And, and so this is kind of a subset of Twitter. And so what a Twitter chat is, it's a conversation. It's just going to forward. There we go. Um, it's a conversation. It's where we want to talk about a specific topic, and we're really looking to engage people on that topic. So the key to this is they are one hour, so you need to know what time the Twitter chat is at. So you're going to see people advertising, join it. Like I uh, moderate Prof Chat on Tuesdays at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, shameless self-promotion. Uh, so if you are online on Tuesday at 8 o'clock Eastern, or I'm of course in California, so 5 o'clock my time, you'd be able to see me having conversations with other educators. Now, Prof Chat is for higher ed, uh, but there's so many of them that are for K-12 or even grade level specific. I think hashtag, is it first chat, uh, is going to be you know, first grade teachers, and hashtag second chat is, is second grade teachers, and so on. Um, you're going to be able to find people having a chat that is specific to your grade level, your interests, your subject, uh, things that you're into. So again, it's a one-hour conversation. You've got to find out when that is. Um, oh, there we go. The weekly Twitter chat schedule was shared. Thank you, Peggy, for doing that. You should bookmark that. Cyberman absolutely has a wonderful list of uh, Twitter chats that you can join. And the key of the Twitter chat is it's not a Twitter chat without the hashtag. So our hashtag today is town class live 20, live cl excuse me, live class 20. Uh, and I would need to include that hashtag on all the tweets. Every single tweet you need to include that hashtag because otherwise people are not going to find you. Because what we're doing is we agree to be online at the same time and we use the same hashtag. So we search the hashtag to find out who's talking on that topic. 
cannot emphasize enough the importance of including the hashtag in all your tweets, retweets, and replies. And so what you'll see is that somebody is moderating. And so you're going to find out who is the moderator, and they're going to be putting out a series of questions. So this is something that is structured. Uh, yes, please, if you have any questions, please put them into the chat. It is something that is structured. It's, uh, there are Twitter chats that are more loosely organized. I believe SunChat, hashtag SunChat, is by Star Stack Steen. I, she participates in that. And that's more of an unstructured conversation on Sunday morning for an hour. Uh, but most of them, there's a moderator who chooses what the, they pick a topic, uh, and then they choose, oh, about seven to ten questions that they're going to tweet out over this hour. So you're going to want to be on the lookout for, for that. And then when you are replying to those tweets, you want to know, uh, point out which question you're replying to. So if you're replying to a specific question, you're going to put A1, I'm replying to, to question 1, or A2, I'm replying to question 2. This is my answer. So you'll notice a lot of those Q1, A1s if you're in a Twitter chat. Now, I use TweetDeck. And so what that does for me is allows me to have multiple columns and kind of organize my Twitter chats. I know some of you use some other things, and so in a minute I'm going to ask you what other uh, products that you use. But I use TweetDeck. So you'll notice from my screenshot is I have columns for different hashtags. There's a column for notifications for people who are engaging directly with me. And uh, in the upper left-hand corner, there's the ability to compose a tweet straight from TweetDeck, so I can click on that. Or you may not know this trick. You can just hit the letter N. If you hit the letter N, it's going to start a new tweet. Now what I do is I copy the hashtag onto the clipboard. So that as I, I will, I'll hit N so I can start a new tweet. I'm going to type my tweet, and then I just paste the hashtag because I'm going to need to use that over and over again. So make sure that you do that. Now you'll notice on the left hand side underneath the compose, you know, put a little star next to that, there is a search. Where is it? Just let me do it. Okay. Here we go. There's a search uh, option on there. Oh, I see what my problem is. Sorry, I'm defunct on use this. I can't switch back to arrow. So you can search the hashtag to create a column. So if you're not familiar with TweetDeck, TweetDeck.com. You can run it straight from your browser. Uh, and I would go ahead and install that and start thinking, what kind of hashtags or Twitter chats do you want to participate in? Do a search and add those in. And you know, sometimes there's more than one Twitter chat going on at a time. So this can be a way that you can multitask and participate in multiple Twitter chats. And my hat off to you if you can pull that off successfully, because that is a little overwhelming to me. So my advice is that you get your tweet deck columns set up in advance and to have a column for the hashtag of the chat and also a column for whoever is moderating the chat because the moderator is going to be putting out the questions. Now if you've ever participated in a Twitter chat like California Ed Chat, I'm going to put the hashtag down there, pound CA Ed Chat. Uh, it's like a waterfall. I would not recommend California Ed Chat to be the first Twitter chat that you sign up for. In fact, if your first one you participate in, why don't you participate in mine, Prof Chat? It's a, it's a smaller group, and the chat's going to go slower, and we're a friendly group. Um, so feel free to, to join Prof Chat Tuesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but whoever the moderator is, they're going to be putting out the questions. So if it is a really fast-paced chat, it's easy to miss the question. And then you're having to scroll back down and try to find it, which happens to me a lot. So I'll actually do one for the hashtag, one for the moderator, and I'll do another column, again, of the same hashtag. So I will have two columns, same hashtag. And the reason I do that is that gives me one that is live time. So uh, like I said, California Ed Chat is like a waterfall. Those tweets just keep coming. They keep coming. It's definitely overwhelming. And so that thing is moving, moving, moving. I can't, I, I need to pause and read some of these. So I have the second column that I scroll and I pause it so I can read and reply, but still keep up with 
what's going on in the moment and being current. So that's just a suggestion to think about maybe having three columns, one for the hashtag, one for the moderator, and another one for the same hashtag. But definitely have something to moderate this. Generally, I do not do a Twitter chat using Twitter.com. Um, it seems to leave out some of the tweets. The refresh, I have to refresh manually and, and I get behind. So I don't know, is anybody here? Uh, can we just take a quick poll if you want to give me a yes or no? Do you use Twitter.com when you participate in a tweet chat, in a Twitter chat? Do you use Twitter.com? Yeah, okay. So we can see uh, people who have done this are saying, no, we don't use Twitter. Trying to do it on my phone, is, uh, it's challenging to do it using the Twitter app. Um, so I would recommend that you use something like TweetDeck. So in, uh, excuse me, yes, in TweetDeck, when I do a search for the hashtag, it's type in the, into the search with the hashtag on there, down at the bottom it says add column. So that's just how I do that. Glenn uses the two column method also. Um, that it, it's so handy. So just add a column and you're good to go. And you can delete those. I, I participate in several Twitter chats, so just a little bit before the, like an hour before the, the chat is about to start, I'll go ahead and set up my column so I can see, start engaging with people prior to the chat also. So at the time, so if the chat starts at 8 o'clock, at 8 o'clock, jump onto Twitter, introduce yourself, and use the hashtag. Uh, you know, who are you? What are you? Where are you from? What do you teach? Just give people a little bit of demographic information. and. Reply to people, hey, you know, it's exciting to see you here. You know, it's, this is a way to connect. If people are engaging in a Twitter chat, this is a great way to meet engaged educators who want to share. So these are people to follow. Did I show the tip about adding a dot in front of the at symbol? I did, but I will share it again. Uh, when you reply to a tweet, it tends to put the at symbol first, which makes it semi-private. The only people who see that tweet in their mainstream are people who follow both of you. So you'll see people putting a period as the first character just to make sure that it goes out to the wide audience. Now if I'm using the hashtag and I'm looking at the hashtag, even when people at mention reply, I'm still going to see those on the hashtag whether or not I follow both people. All right, so you would introduce yourself and then Start replying. Reply to people. The point of a Twitter chat is to connect with other educators. Reply and use the hashtag. Uh, you're looking for the Q1, Q2, uh, but just who's using the hashtag and they're putting stuff out there, uh, go ahead and hit reply. So you can see I have a, a couple of screenshots. Uh, where someone is uh, replying, this is Catholic Ed Chat this morning, so we have an A1, so she's replying to the question, responding to the question. And then you can see underneath that a couple of people that are replying to her, so you're getting a conversation going. It's not intended to just be you throwing your ideas out there, there's 10 questions, you do 10 tweets. We're trying to make some connections, uh, develop your PLN. So uh, as other people post their replies, uh, their answers, reply back to them and get a back and forth conversation going. Which is why I really like to when I'm doing um, a Twitter chat is I have my notifications column in TweetDeck right next to my hashtag column. Like I have them right next to each other so that I can see what the chat is but also that I can keep engaging with people who are connecting with me during the chat. I want to see who's talking to me directly, so my, my notifications. Yeah, and these tweets can go by really fast. And what is awesome about a Twitter chat is people sharing resources. And they'll share resources left and right or really good ideas or something you're like, oh my gosh, I totally need to tell my principal about that. Uh, I don't think you can take notes fast enough. So if you just hit the little favorite icon on the tweets, if you go back to your Twitter profile and you can see all the, all the tweets that you've tweeted, it says favorites on your profile. If you click on that, you can find everything you favorited. So you can go back to that uh, relatively easily and get all of those resources that were shared. So favorite, favorite, favorite. Be on the lookout for the Q1 
that's the moderator throwing out the question. Usually I notice this because I see people putting in there the A1 with the answer, and I'm like, ah, oh, I missed the question. So again, good reason to follow the moderator. I don't always take my own advice, but um, definitely helps. So you reply with A1 colon, put your answer, and the hashtag. Hashtag, I think I will say that about 50 million times. Um, again, that is the key to a Twitter chat is we all agree to use the same hashtag for that one hour of time. So quick poll, what do you guys use to manage your Twitter feed? I use TweetDeck. Does anyone use anything else? So go ahead and just put it down in the chat. Can you ever hear hashtag enough? Well, apparently somebody's kid can. I, I think we just live to embarrass our kids. That's our jobs, right? Like I said, I have five kids. I get a lot of eye rolling at my house. Even my uh, four-year-old, she's master of the eye roll. Oh, really, Mom? Yep. Tweet deck, we got some Hootsuite users. Uh, does anyone use anything like visible tweets? And that's good. There's, there's different ones that when you put in the hashtag, it's going to show the tweets, but it's not necessarily meant for participating in the chat. But um, if you're doing this with your students, like having a Twitter chat, is to be able to put something like visible tweets where it's showing what your students are tweeting on that same hashtag. Uh, it's, it's a really nice visual way for students to kind of feel famous and to bring some cohesion to, to the activity that you're doing. So some people are talking about T-Webs. Um, I'm not, I've seen people use that. I, I can't really speak to what that does exactly if anyone wants to share specifically what they're going to get from the T-Webs. Uh, tweet chat, there's, there's ones that are specifically for participating in a Twitter chat where it's, uh, you put in the hashtag and it shows you those tweets. Is it uh, tweetchat.com, is that tweetchat.com? I think I've used that before. So I thought what we would do is we would just kind of practice a little chat down in the um, uh, Twitter chat, down in the chat here. We're not actually on Twitter. We're going to just kind of simulate it so we can see how it goes. Oh, how do I schedule tweets? You can do that in TweetDeck. You cannot do it from Twitter.com. So TweetDeck does allow me to pre-schedule them. Um, if we want to go in that direction of how do you moderate, I have and do moderate quite a bit. I usually do not schedule my tweets when I moderate because I want to kind of wait to see how the conversation is going and if there's a lull in the conversation. And I'll, I'll put together about eight questions and then sometimes, you know, my question's not really getting good responses or people are just responding with yes. Well, then I need to, like, clarify. So maybe question five people weren't engaging so much with. So I'll put out question 5B. And I'll just try and uh, make it uh, clarify it, right, to, to draw more specific answers out of people to get them to give um, some, some higher quality answers than yes. OK, so just I got a couple of questions down here. Um, would a normal person want to moderate? Absolutely, it's so easy to moderate. If any of you would like to moderate, I would love for you to, to hit me up for some advice. I do have a blog post on that. And I have a really great spreadsheet because the answer to everything is a spreadsheet um, that makes it really easy for you to just tweet. You just type in all your questions into the spreadsheet and it creates a hyperlink that will tweet out uh, your questions when you're ready. You just click on the link and, and the tweet goes out. So it's really nice because you don't have to copy and paste and automatically puts the Q1, Q2, and the hashtag. So if anyone's interested in that, I would love to share that with you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to practice this. Uh, just doing a, I've got three questions. We're just going to do a little, uh, I'm going to put the question. I'm going to do a Q1, and you're going to reply with A1 and the hashtag. You ready? Uh, so first, welcome to hashtag lab class 20. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. So I would start that hashtag. Now I'm going to highlight this um, hashtag, and I use shift and the left arrow after I type it because it will um, highlight one character at a time. I 
Okay. So go ahead and introduce yourself down at the bottom. Use the hashtag. So what I am doing as the moderators, I am welcoming people. I, apparently I cannot type and talk at the same time. I'm welcoming people to the chat. So I'm, I'm identifying who's, who's saying they're here and making sure I use the hashtag. I uh, can't get to everybody, but I try to you know, connect with a few people, get that going try to ask some different questions. And so that's going to usually take place for about the first three to five minutes of a Twitter chat. It's just people introducing themselves, a little bit of back and forth, you know, it's good to see you again, um, those kinds of things. So question one, have you ever joined a Twitter chat? So I would put that out. Q1, have you ever joined a Twitter chat? And I put the hashtag. So then you would reply with A1, give me your answer, right? So this is an example uh, as a moderator of a question that I'm getting like yes, no answers. So when I'm trying to construct uh, Twitter chat questions, I either try to avoid questions like this or I'm going to put the second question close, you know, I'll do question one at, say it's an 8 o'clock chat, I'll, I'll throw out question one about 8.05, 8.07. And then if it's a question like this, then about 8.09, I better be ready to move on to question two. Otherwise, I try to time my questions out for about every eight minutes as I try to put out a new question. So, but again, I really don't like to schedule that because sometimes questions are really rocking and we keep going and we're going to spend 10 to 12 minutes on one question and other times just the question falls flat and I just need to move on to the next one. So I really want to, as a moderator, be responsive to the discussion and also be willing to put in another question. Um, like I said, I might have question five, then I'll put question five B, uh, just seeing what the responses are on that. Um, or that it kind of got answered previously, and then I might skip a question. So again, I, when I'm doing a, um, when I'm moderating, I have the questions in advance. I have them typed out. A lot of people copy and paste them. Um, but I use a spreadsheet with a hyperlink, which makes it a lot easier. I do have that as a template for if anyone's anyone's interested. Okay, so don't forget to reply to somebody. So I'm going to say at Sophia, why have you never joined a Twitter chat? So what I'm trying to do here is, you know, she's answering yes or no. So as the moderator, I'm trying to elicit more conversation. So this is, that's the point of a Twitter chat is not to just throw out your answers but to dig deep and to get to know people and to get some new ideas. So as a moderator, I want to draw more stuff out of people, but that's not just the moderator's job. That is the job of every participant in the chat. Paula's got some great advice. She's got a Google Doc that she sets up in advance so people can find the questions in advance so they don't have to wait for the moderator to tweet them out. And I really appreciate that California Ed Chat does that because, like I said, their tweet chat goes so fast. Okay, so once I see everyone's kind of answered, and we've had some replies, uh, I'm going to go on to the next question. So I'm going to type that in. Always putting a hashtag on there. So you're going to reply with A2 and the hashtag. Thank you. That's, that's exactly it. The moderator is so important because they're helping to get everyone involved and draw people into a conversation. I agree, Brian. Sometimes there are too many people and you can't follow the stream. Like, so I'm telling you like about uh, California Ed Chat, which is don't try to. I don't try to read all the tweets on California Ed Chat. What I will do is, again, I'll do the two columns so that one is live, uh, you know, way too fast, way too much. 
And then as the second column that I've scrolled so it's not um, it's not moving. And I just scroll a little bit, I scroll a little bit, I reply, I respond to a few people. And then I scroll all the way up to the top, I skip all a bunch of them. And I and I can just kind of do it that way that I just kind of find a chunk, reply, and uh, kind of stay in that zone uh, of tweets. And then scroll back up to the top and just skip a whole bunch of them that I missed. And that's okay. And then don't forget I have my notifications column next to the hashtag column. So I will set, spend some time just replying and engaging with people back and forth. And I'll miss a whole bunch of tweets during that time. I'm like, oh, we've been talking about question number two here for a while. And now they're on question number six. I missed questions three, four, and five. Whatever. I don't try and go back to those. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, what other frustrations do we have? Uh, some chats are frivolous or redundant posts. Susie, I'm going to totally agree with you on that. Sometimes I'm looking at a Twitter chat and the questions, I'm just going to say it, they're trite. And I'm like, it's, it's, it's things I've thought of or it's stuff I already discussed with a lot of people and they're not helping me to challenge me to really, I want to get mad. If I'm in a Twitter chat, I'd like to walk away at some point where I'm a little ticked off, to be honest with you, because I want to challenge my thinking. I don't want to just have people agree with me. What fun is that? that, that that's, that's not a good use of my time as an educator. What is a good use of my time as an educator is for me to get new ideas and to rethink what I've been doing. I don't necessarily want to get mad. Sometimes it's just great resources and, and good ways to connect and support. Uh, but if it's just, oh yes, kids are awesome. I, I love students. I love to teach and learn. It's, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really help me, right? You know, they can go, time zones can be frustrating. Suzanne, I totally agree with that. Um, being on the West Coast is the best. But I know some of these uh, Twitter chats are happening at 10 o'clock at night if you are West Coast. So that can be definitely a frustration. So to overcome information overload, I'm again going to suggest don't try to read all the tweets. Just don't. Don't do it. I see a lot of you uh, commenting about how fast that they go. Uh, trite questions, yep. Um, scrolling down here. Uh, people forget to put on the hashtag. So what I will do, when, uh, especially if I'm the moderator, but even if I'm just participating, is if I notice that somebody tweeted and they forgot the hashtag, and it's probably because I'm following them, I will retweet a modified tweet and I'll throw the hashtag on for them. Especially people who are new to Twitter chats, they frequently forget to do the hashtag. So if I know somebody is new to the chat, I sometimes will add that new person to a column so I can monitor their chat so I can make sure they're using the hashtag so I can keep reminding them to put the hashtag on. And I hope that's not super annoying, but um, just trying to help them out and, and help them to connect with others. So I'll do that sometimes. Okay? And so sometimes you'll see uh, a person like, the, um, look, look out, question three is coming up. So just sometimes the moderator will give uh, a heads up. So I'm giving you a heads up. And here's my last question. Question three, what Twitter chat advice do you have? Andrew doesn't like it when it becomes an advertising spot and people promoting their brand. Totally people can see that coming. You can block people on Twitter if they're really annoying. And if you're having a really good chat, you know it's a really good chat when um, hot chicks start replying to, to the chat. Uh, and I just start blocking all of those people who are spamming it. Uh, right, a retweet is a full, uh, an RT is a full retweet and an MT is a modified tweet. So you've changed it in some way, just giving people a heads up that it's not a direct quote. Don't be free to read for a little while and get comfortable. Totally agree with that. You don't have to read all the, the tweets and you don't have to participate the whole time. There's so many times that I, I start a Twitter chat and then, as like I said, I have five kids and somebody's fallen down and hurt themselves. So I have to, you know, run off and do something. But, you know, even just participating for a couple of minutes. And it's so easy to get sucked into a Twitter chat. You know, I'm just, I'm on Twitter real quick and I see somebody saying something and they've got a hashtag. And they just suck me in. So this morning, uh, Catholic Ed Chat mentioned something about homework, which I am staunchly anti-homework. I'm just going to throw out a blanket statement and say no homework ever uh, if you want to get controversial. And so when I see that, I'm just like, I can't stay away. 
I click on the hashtag and I start doing this uh, Twitter chat. But I'm, I was trying to make my slides here for the chat today, so I like I can't engage in this chat. I can't do it. But I keep bopping over every little bit and doing a little bit. But I wasn't fully participating, and that's okay. Um, just to do it a little bit. Oh, if your account has been compromised, Sophia, um, change your password. Make a good password. It seems like it's really easy to get your account hacked in, in Twitter. So uh, this is everything that I had to kind of get us started. So we're going to move on to questions. And I think, um, Lori, were you going to do that? Yes, Alice, thank you. I do have some questions captured. Um, let's go back to, do you need a different email address for different Twitter accounts? Yes, you do need a different email address, but there's a trick. So if you're using uh, Gmail or Google Apps, you can just put like a plus on there. So I'll take mine, uh, say my doing food tweets, so I would definitely need to have a different hashtag for that. So instead of just Mrs. Keeler at gmail.com, I'll sign up with Mrs. Keeler plus food tweets at gmail.com. If you just put a plus in any word that you want, uh, it, it looks like a different email account. So it's the same email account, but different. Great. Are children under 13 years old allowed to use Twitter? That's we had such a good question. I'm not sure. I think early not. I don't think, I don't, I don't know. Does anyone know the answer to that? You need an email address, and email addresses are, are limited by age. Sometimes. Twitter is over 13, I see in the chat. So uh, if your students are under the age of 13, you, you set up a classroom Twitter account. And it's something that you are doing with them. Yeah. Are there suggestions for setting, uh, setting up a Twitter management tool in the Live Finder? I am sure there is. Does anybody have uh, the direct link to setting up the tweet deck or something? So Eileen says Kathleen, Kathy uses her personal account. I would recommend you set up a, a classroom account, one just for your class. This is nice. The, uh, I think this goes to the Twitter chat conversations. These are public conversations, correct? Absolutely. Just, pre just yeah. assume everything on Twitter is public, including your direct messages. Uh, I, I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure almost every one of us has thought we were direct messaging and accidentally posted as a live public tweet. Um, I just assume that tw the purpose of Twitter is to connect with other educators publicly. Don't put anything on Twitter anywhere that you don't want to be public. Great, don't great think you can tip. delete them. <laughs> that stuff shows up. Yeah, People okay. take screenshots. They save them. Um, Twitter is public. Yeah, somebody did ask about the Russian tweets. Is there yeah. a way to erase them? There might I have a not really be. good, I mean, you can, you can go in and delete your tweets, um, mm -hmm. but have a really good password. I, have a, I do not use the same password for my Twitter that I use for other accounts. Mm -hmm. Um, spam in Twitter hashtag chats. How how to deal with spam in the? Oh, you know, I think Twitter has gotten Twitter better chat. about managing that. That I see a lot less of it. Mm -hmm. I report and block them as much as I can. Uh, you can participate in less popular Twitter chats, and you're not going to probably get spam. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're if you're participating in in Ed Chat or California Ed Chat or one of these ones that where you start trending and you start drawing the attention of spammers, um, the only thing you can really do is just block them. Mm -hmm. Do you use MT for a modified tweet even if you change a tweet a little bit? Uh, uh, it depends on if I have enough characters. Um, mm -hmm. but if, I, if I just take out now, like sometimes I'll just take out vowels. Because I just mm -hmm. need the extra characters on to start taking out vowels. To me, it's still the same tweet, so I won't MT that one. Um, I think it really, for me, depends on how much I modify it. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, if I do modify it, I should. I should put an MT instead of RT. Yeah. Okay. Oh, let's see. I'm not sure. That looks like a question. Um, so how do you, someone asked how do you block. If you click on uh, a person's name in Twitter, it becomes, uh, it kind of opens up a little window. And then next to where you could follow them, where you don't, is a little drop down thing where you can choose to block them. There's a drop down arrow next to the follow icon. So, okay. How to delete a tweet? Uh, if you if you click on your you got to go find your tweet and you click on your tweet. Let me. Um, there's a dot dot dot. There's three dots. It's reply, retweet, favorite, and then under dot 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 is the place where you can delete the tweet. Um, anything on the internet lives forever somewhere, so just assume that, and right. you can delete it. If you're super famous, it's likely that tweet will show up somewhere, even though you deleted it. We're probably not famous enough to worry about that. But I take screenshots of people's tweets, so I mean, they can't delete my screenshot. Mm -hmm. My evidence being, of course, that I have all of these screenshots. <laughs> Yeah. They're still this morning yeah. off of Twitter, but they're posted yeah. publicly, yeah. and Twitter is public. So I mean, this is a, right. so. so I stole that. That's terrific, Alice. I those were the questions that I I was able to to capture. Awesome. Well, thanks. Unless there were recent ones that I missed. And does anybody else have any other chat? questions? I think we're good. There is a yes, recording there today. Yes, there will be a recording available sometime this afternoon, Andrew. Yes, we'll we'll finish up the session now. Thanks, you guys. I hope it was helpful. You'll be thank able to you ask so me. much, Alice. That was fabulous. It was exactly what we were hoping, and it certainly has gotten the conversation going. So we hope people will continue it. Um, we do want to say we're so glad all of you joined us today, and we hope you'll come back. Now next Saturday we won't be having a show because that's the Den Streamathon virtual conference, and uh, there's even a uh, an Ed Camp virtual next Saturday, so there are a number of things going on. Um, the November 1 show is going to be the team uh, of middle school teachers from Apache Junction Junior High. They have some great things to share about technology integration. We have a featured teacher in November, on November 8th. Jamie Reynolds is a fantastic librarian and has wonderful things to share with us. November 15th, if you haven't discovered edweb.net yet for free professional development, it's fabulous. They have webinars several days a week. And Lisa Schmucky is going to join us with a team of teachers and principals to talk about how they're using EdWeb for their own professional development and at their schools. Lisa Thuman is going to be with us on November 22nd to continue our learning about Google Drive and Google Classroom and all things Google. It's hard to limit it to just one or two things. And then November 29th, there won't be a show because that's Thanksgiving weekend in the US. So we hope that you'll come back and join us whenever you can, same time. Also, don't forget the K-12 online conference is on. Right now, the pre-conference keynote was fantastic. It was last Monday by Wes Fryer. And starting Monday morning, every single day for the next two weeks, you'll see anywhere from two to four presentations published each day. Remember, K-12 Online is asynchronous. That means you can watch that recording 
anytime you want. You don't have to be online at the same time as someone else. And there are some excellent strands that you can see there and some excellent presenters. So be sure to check that out. Also, just quickly, the information about the Discovery Ed Streamathon, that link is in our live binder, so you can access it, sign up, it's all free, and it's next Saturday. Be sure to check out the Learning Revolution. If you don't receive their newsletters, there is no better way to get regular updates on great things that are going on, including Twitter chats, including webinars, virtual conferences, all kinds of things related to educational technology. So sign up for that. And now, Lori, I'm going to turn it back to you. Thank you, Peggy. You can nominate a featured teacher from the form at this link, tinyurl.com slash CR2OY featured teacher nominate without the E at the end. And you can also nominate yourself for the monthly featured teacher. As you exit the session, your browser should open a link for the survey. And the link for the survey is on this slide as well. Uh, Peggy's posted the link, or will post the link in the chat box. The link also is in the live binder for the month. So there are three different ways to get the survey. At the bottom of the survey, there's a request for a professional development certificate. When you do, or if you do make this request, please include a personal email address rather than a school email address because schools have a tendency to block the professional development certificate from getting into your inbox. The session for today is being recorded and it will be available in numerous ways, including an iTunes U video collection and audio collection. So you can access recordings that way as well. There is an RSS feed for the recordings in addition that you can get on the Classroom 2.0 live site. Special thanks again to Alice Keeler, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our site, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thank you so much for coming today on a Saturday.